Welcome to CATS Tutorials and in this video I'll be covering practice problem 3.5 and this video is sponsored by my parents. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so let's start by forming the mesh equations. What you'll realize is taking this this current in um, at this point here let's let's um, let's call it X so from this direction which is indicated here you can see that I1 goes in looking at this node here see that I1 goes in there because it's going like that so it goes in there and once it reaches this junction it's going to split into an unknown current and I2 which goes that way. So this is I2, and this is an unknown current, right? So this unknown current, let's call it, what can we call it? Let's just call it I, right? So this I over here is essentially, so I1 splits into I and I2. So I1 is therefore equals to I plus I2, right? So the I here is essentially equals to I1 minus I2. So that is that is basically how you find equations for unknown currents at a node when you are working with mesh analysis. So let's continue to find uh, the mesh currents, right? So starting in the first mesh or where we find I1, we're gonna say, starting with the voltage source of here. So this goes into the negative terminal of the voltage source first, and then to there, and then finally, nope, this is not the final one, but then there, and then finally here. So always look at your circuit. Always make sure that the number of terms that you have matches the number of elements or branches which you have in your circuit. Because you could always uh, forget, like I, I had, you could always forget the one at the bottom. So make sure you have everything in your equation and it, it will work out. So starting with the equation of the first mesh or where we find I1, we are essentially going to say, starting with the voltage source, negative 36 plus two I1. And when we get to the 12, which is shared between the two, we said the unknown current uh, is essentially I1 subtract R2, right? And we are indeed, if you check the direction which I assigned to it, I1 actually goes in that direction. So the current, the current across that 12 will then be positive, right? So the positive of that is essentially I1 subtract I2. Hmm, I say essentially a lot. That's hilarious. Okay, so 12 multiplied by the positive of I, because I1 goes in that same direction. Then I'm going to say I1 minus I2. And then finally, we have the 4 at the bottom, right? So 4, um, 4 I1. So just a reminder, this question is actually from the fourth edition of Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. So you can just use the approach which I'm showing you to basically apply it to the values which you might have, right? So this is the first equation, or this is the equation of the first mesh. So let's not focus on simplifying it now. Let's continue to the second mesh, then we're gonna simplify later. So in the second mesh, where we find I2, you'll notice that at this point, since I, we assigned I to go down, this is actually going up in this case. So we're gonna have negative I. Negative I, if you look at here, negative I is essentially equals to I2 minus I1. And that's why this same current, when we're working with the second one, actually changes to that. It's not magic, it's math. Okay, so moving on, Starting with that shared uh, resistor between the two meshes, we have 12 I2 minus I1 in this case, because it is opposing the direction of the unknown current, right? And then going up, we say nine I2 and plus 24 volts. And finally, plus three I2 is equal to zero. So we can now proceed to simplify these equations here. 
and solve them using any method which you're comfortable with. I don't think we only have two variables here, so I don't really think we need Kramer's rule and stuff. So let me just simplify these equations and then you're gonna proceed to solving them, right? So this is equation one, this is equation two. So equation one, let's let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's add stuff up. So we have two, twelve, and four. So that is six plus twelve, it's gonna be eighteen. So eighteen I one, we have that out of the way. And we have um twelve, negative twelve, so negative twelve I two. And we have a constant by itself, so you can basically just take it to the other side of the equal sign to have equals to 36. That is equation one, simplified. Moving on to the second equation, we have negative 12. And that is basically it for the i1 variable. So negative 12 i1, right? And for i2, we have 12, 9, and 3. This is 12. Added to 12 is basically 24. So we have 24i2, and we have a constant 24, taking it to the other side of the equal sign and make it uh, negative 24. So those are your two simplified equations, two simplified equations, so you don't really need Kramer's rule for this. You can just substitute, right? So choosing to substitute, we're going to divide this equation. As you can see, the common factor is 12. So let's divide all of this by 12, right? Basically divide every term by 12. So it's going to be negative i1 plus 2i2 is equal to negative 2, right? And then taking this i1 to this side and this negative 2 to this side, we are going to have i1 is equal to 2i2 plus 2, right? So we can take this to be the second equation. So we're going to substitute this second equation into the first equation, right? So we can also simplify this, the first equation by dividing by 6. So you can uh, quickly substitute and multiply everything simply without using calculator. So dividing this first equation by 6, we will get 3i1, negative 4i2, and finally 6 is equal to 6. So that is the equation. So this equation, looking at this equation, we then have to substitute this um, i1. So substituting there, we have 2i2 um, plus 2, right? Negative 4i2 is equal to 6. Okay, so that's what we have. Multiplying through, we have 6i2, right? Plus 6, um, negative 4i2 is equal to 6. Adding these two, that's basically 10. 10 i2 is equals to, then we take this to this side. So it's going to be 6 minus 6, which is 0. So I2 is basically equals to 0 amperes, right? And we said I1 is equals to 2I2 two plus 2. So substituting this I2 into this equation, we have I1 is equals to 2, and then the I2 we found to be 0. So 0 plus 2. So I1 is essentially equals to 2 amperes. And that is how you solve this problem.